Hey, this is Mike with Icon, and we're here in the studio today with an iKeyboard X. Today we're going to give you some tips on how to set it up, how to do a firmware upgrade, and how to use the iMap software. Um, we have an iKeyboard 6X in the studio, and we're going to go ahead and start by f upgrading the firmware. Uh, first thing I like to do is to first see where I'm at as far as the firmware version. And a uh, simple way to do that is go into your search here. We're on Windows 10, by the way, and put in, type in control panel. And go ahead and bring up your control panel. I prefer the old Windows 7. Click on view devices and printers. And we're going to turn on our Icon 6X. Let it boot up. And here it says we are at version 1.01. 1 .1, 1 .01. So if we go to the uh, IconProAudio.com website and we go to Downloads, we can look at the keyboards here and click on See All 48 Articles. All right, under iKeyboard 6X, we need to get the iMap for Windows, which I've already downloaded and installed. And secondly, we need to get this uh, iKeyboard 6X firmware version 1.03. So that's where we should be at 103. We're at 101. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and download that to my downloads folder. And um, once that's finished, I'll go into my folder there. And there it is. I'm going to extract to another folder. All right, so inside that folder, we have our um, .bin file, and it's version 1.03, which we're going to use um, a little later in the process. But just remember that it's in your downloads folder, and it's uh, inside that um, folder that we extracted to. All right, so next, we're going to go ahead. If you downloaded your IMAP and you installed it, you should get an icon, sort of like this one here. And when you open it up, you'll get this box here that looks like the keyboard. And notice that at the top here, we have all the different um, X series keyboards. In this case, I have the 6X, so I'm gonna choose 6X. And I've got my firmware upgrade button right here to the left, and that's what we're gonna use here to do the upgrade. Click on that. And we get a dialog here with five steps. Uh, click on step one. And it will show us, again, the version we're currently at is 1.01. .01, so we want to make sure that's selected for MIDI in and MIDI out. And say OK. Second step is to send a request. And then you'll get a box here that says it's been done. Firmware is erased. Step three. This is the basic stripped down firmware that's in there now. The operating system firmware. And just choose 1.00 for both boxes MIDI in MIDI out click OK and this step here is where we're gonna actually go and find that file that we downloaded that BIN file in my case it was in my downloads folder so I just need to go to downloads and then find the iKeyboard 6x firmware there it is 103.bin select that and now I get to the final step where I actually do the upgrade and make sure you read this warning here we want to make sure the process finishes before we move ahead and make sure you don't lose any power don't shut off your computer don't interrupt this process in any way Okay, so we got upgrade completed. And we just say okay to that. We can close this dialog and the original screen comes back up again. So here, now we're at version 1.03. And what I like to do is go back to your control panel again and make sure that it shows 103 there and it does. If you right click on that icon, you'll see under the hardware tab that we still have the 1.01 .01. so what I like to do just to be safe is go ahead and click on this and then click on remove device 
and then say yes. And then what you need to do is power off your iKeyboard and power back on again. And this brings in a new de brings in the device a new device, and it should be uh, updated on the hardware section. This takes this could take a minute, uh, could be less depending on the speed of your computer. You saw that first screen. We're waiting for an actual second screen that says the device is ready. There it is. Cool. Okay, so right click on that again. Properties. Look under hardware, and you can see now we have 1.03. So we know for sure we have the right device. Everything's good. All right, next, I want to um, show you how to set up this keyboard with the Cubase DAW. And <clears throat> if we go to mode down here, you'll see all the different presets for the DAW. And this is basically just setting up uh, the control section here. We're basically setting that up off to the left there, you know, with the play and the rewind and stop and all that. And we're making sure that all the MIDI mapping is correct. So in this case, like I said, I'm going to set up with Cubase DAW. So I'm going to select Cubase. I'm going to go over here to MIDI devices. And we have two different devices now. And I want to sort of explain that to you. Um, but for now, choose the first one because that is the control section of the keyboard. And say OK. And then you're going to go ahead and send data. And it says send is done. So you should be in Cubase mode now. And a good way that I always check that is I, I can turn off the keyboard, turn it back on again. And instead of, I think it, at first it said Nuendo, now it should actually say Cubase. Yeah, there it is. So if you, if you were to set that to logic, it would say logic, samplitude, it would say samplitude. So you always know what, what mode your, your control section of your keyboard is in. So now we're in Cubase, that's great. Um, I wanna go back to those two different MIDI inputs that you saw when I was um, selecting the, uh, the mode in the um, IMAP there and MIDI aux section. So I have a program that's called MIDI aux and I want to demonstrate how there are actually two MIDI inputs to the keyboard, kind of like what you saw in the IMAP when I did the, um, when I changed to Cubase control mode, and I was sending data to the to the um, workstation part, the control section. And um, you can really see this with the MIDI aux. You can get this program MIDI aux, by the way, just by Googling MIDI aux, um, and you can download it for Windows. Uh, if you go to options, MIDI devices, you'll see that there are two MIDI inputs. There's MIDI input one and MIDI input two. Um, MIDI input one was what we used for the control section. That was what we used to uh, change to Cubase mode. MIDI input two is for the keyboard section. So I just wanted to demonstrate that MIDI aux is a good way to show that if I'm monitoring the um, first section, I'm actually... Uh, looking at these controls and you can see the MIDI data that's being sent on oh, with the transfer but you can see it's being sent here all right but the keyboard section you're not getting anything if I go back to the monitoring and I change it around I look at the second MIDI in now we're looking at keyboard data so you can always use this as a troubleshooting uh, tool too to just see that you're getting all your data and over here you're not going to see any data because I'm not monitoring the MIDI input one. All right, so hopefully that was helpful as demonstrating that there are actually two MIDI ins for the keyboard. All right, so let's go ahead and open up our Cubase DAW. And I've already got a project open. Um, and I wanna show you real quick how to set up the uh, controller section of the keyboard. We go to our devices, go down to device setup, and under transport, we want to add a controller. And we have PDFs online for all this stuff. I'll show you on the website uh, in case you need to remember. And in this case, we're going to add a Mackie control, not the Mackie control UE or the Mackie control baby or anything like that, just the Mackie control. And over here where we have our MIDI in and MIDI out, this is where we want to select the first MIDI uh, input device. Um, that we showed you earlier. Make sure it's the first one because it is for the control section. 
and uh, I've done it on the MIDI in and MIDI out. I'm gonna hit apply and say okay. And you can see the lights lit up here, some of the lights. And uh, now our play button will work, our stop button, all our different buttons will work. And record. All right, so next we want to set up an instrument track. And the way we do that is go to add track, instrument. And I'll add one track here. And on the input section, MIDI input, let's make sure we do the MIDI in two, because remember this is the keyboard sections now, so we're, we're inputting the MIDI of the keyboard to the track. On the output, you select your uh, VST instrument. In this case, I have, a, I have a Steinberg Hallion, and that is coming up. Hold on a second. Okay. Set it to acoustic piano. And I will make sure the track is armed. And you should get some piano sound. So that's basically it. I mean, if you wanted to record, oh yeah, let me show you. If you if you turn off the record button, you can turn on the monitoring this by hitting this here. The uh, encoder knob that turns the monitor on and off and when you do that you can also hear the sounds but if you're gonna record let's use the record button and we'll go ahead and hit record and that's it hit stop play it back there you go okay so that's the pretty much the setup in uh, Cubase it's Pretty similar for Logic and other ones. Um, Pro Tools, I think all you do is just open an instrument track. You don't have to worry about actually setting the, um, the MIDI in and MIDI out for the track. But uh, you should always go online to our website, iconproaudio.com. Uh, go to the keyboard section. Find your keyboard. Uh, in this case, uh, we had a 61 key. It was a 6X, and if you scroll down, you will see the setup demos. These were the demos. And uh, for Cubase, for instance, if you click on Cubase, you'll see the PDF pops up, and it pretty much goes through the steps that I showed you for device setup. Um, that's for the control section. It doesn't really, oh wait, does it show? Yeah, it shows how to add a track and it shows you the MIDI inputs. So it has all this information on there. Um, so you can always go and check out those PDFs. And as always, if you have any questions at all, go to our website, iconproaudio.com. Help Center. And... Request. And just fill out the form and send in a request and we'll answer your questions. Uh, again, I hope this was very helpful with the iKeyboard X-Series, and have a great day.